Hi again, everybody. This video is sponsored by contribution from Laura, and here is her story. Hi, Ollie. This is a follow-up to a few videos you've done for me regarding my soon-to-be ex-husband of 14 years, whom I live under the same roof in separate rooms. It's an extremely contentious environment. I am compelled to tell you that you are the light who gives me hope every day, and I truly appreciate your candid, humorous character. You make me chuckle in many of your videos. The laugh brings me some relief to the pain in my stomach from stress. I wholeheartedly believe that one day your daughter will come to you with open arms and give you a big hug. She will come to know that her dad is a wonderful guy who is helping many people heal, heal through the kind generosity and goodness of his heart. Many people, including me, are grateful for what you do, and I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, really. Believe me, I'm not an ass kick. I'm generally honest and kind, you know, the kind of traits and characteristics that narcs love to abuse. So I have wanted to reveal other components of my stressors in my previous letters to you about some, of, some other very serious issues I'm facing and felt that it would be better served to reveal my tribulations in little doses which are living with a narc husband in a contentious environment who keeps a lock on his door, dealing with the enormous emotion out emotionally of it all, of it all on a daily basis, having a father who has been falsely imprisoned for the past three years in a state that I will only identify as an East Coast favorite, and I am the only family member who's dealing with this, mind you. My sister and mother live in another state and claim they don't know what to do because I'm the only one who knows all the laws and I'm the smart one. Not having any money to do anything with. Not having any motivation to look for a job due to the emotional stress. Needing to concentrate with as much mental clarity to help prepare and review legal forms for my own divorce in, a sep in, a, in, in my separate room while always on guard not to leave any evidence of what I'm doing for fear he'll sneak into my room and discover I'm acting as my own attorney in our divorce. Reading, reviewing, and sending letters regarding my father's situation from attorneys, law enforcement agencies, you name it. Constantly reflecting on my daughter's recent estrangement and coming to the realization that, quite, that she quite possibly has been a narc all of her life. It's painful in writing down my suspicions of my own daughter, as I love her immensely and very proud of her accomplishments. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever heard this particular issue on your channel, and maybe I've missed one that mentions on how to deal with a suspected narcissistic daughter since birth. Before I write any further, I want to propose a random question that weighs on my mind daily regarding living under the same roof in separate rooms with my narc husband, probably because my days are numbered with this narc. I know I'm a bit all over the map, but this could hopefully help other viewers of your channel with the same kind of question. Since I consider myself to be quasi no contact until I am freed from this isolated hell I live in, I rarely utter one word to him. However, if we pass by one another in this small apartment, he always has some kind of weird look on his face or looks sad or will ask antagonizing questions, just to bully me somehow. <clears throat> I am wondering what your take is on this. Do you think the narc is getting a supply without speaking any words when you're, when you're in the presence and are in another room? I know they love giving the silent treatment, but considering the living arrangements, do you think it bothers the narc that I'm not saying anything, that I'm not reacting to his bullshit? Do they get off on that? Wondering if you can comment. Thanks. Um, in that situation, knowing what I know about your situation where he's trying to get things out of you, no, he's not happy. You're not talking to him. He needs you to engage with him in order to start a fight and to get the ball rolling again. You're not giving him that supply that he needs. So I think those looks of aggravation and sadness are real because he would much rather get into a fight with you, Laura, about signing the papers, Laura, through the door, Laura, Laura, where he's begging you, Laura. He's not gaining supply by you not talking to him. He's trying to draw you into a fight. I finally realized that no one's going to help me but me, and I have to, and I have 
had the strength and perseverance of personally preparing my own divorce documents with the assistance of volunteers at the courthouse who have been guiding me to follow the intricate instructions that accompany this project. It's really been arduous and an intense brain work. I thank God for my legal secretary skills for almost 20 years ago. I didn't work in family law, but, preparing my, but in preparing my own forums, I say I've been successful so far. But I have to admit that I really never knew how intricate family law really is and why those lawyers charge so much damn money for a divorce. Since my narc husband has smeared everyone out of my life, including my own daughter, who's 31 years of age, into believing I am crazy and need help, as I indicated earlier, she has recently become estranged from me and I'm asking you for your advice or comments. Out of all the flying monkeys over the years, I have just two friends that I really trust and have known a very long time who remain close to my heart and love me dearly, but they simply cannot fathom nor wrap their heads around the multiple issues I'm currently and actively dealing with. I'm truly heartbroken, Holly. I am unable to comprehend how my own daughter has been duped and brainwashed. Here's a bit about my daughter. This is really hard for me to write because I've never told anyone about my concerns and have kept silence since the day my daughter was born. She's always been a little stubborn. She began having temper tantrums and making herself stiff when she was about two or three, then continued with just being bratty at times. Don't get me wrong, she wasn't like this all the time, but it seems her tantrums were out of hostility or anger. She began talking back to me and then gradually started being a little, a little mean, making remarks that were unkind. She did this quite often in front of her friends as well, and as, as when we were alone, and did this, and, and to this day, it's never ended. When she went off to college at 18, I thought that perhaps she was beginning to act and treat me with more respect and kindness. However, the disappointing truth is that she has never changed. I remember from the time from the time beginning around the age eight or 10, her friends would comment, you're being so mean to your mom, but their words seemed to go in one ear and out the other. I never witnessed her response to her friends, nor did she have any sort of visual reaction. When I succumbed to the revelation and the soul crushing disappointment to find out my husband is a narc after 14 years of marriage. I began to reflect at not only the narc's past behaviors, but also couldn't help reflect on how similar the traits of my daughter matched up with his traits. That's what I was going to say immediately when she said she was going stiff and being mean. But you've only been married to him 14 years, so she's not his daughter. So as I was reading this, I'm thinking to myself, all right, she's been with him 13 years. She was about 15 or 16, I guess, when they got when you got married. But that would tell me you're probably drawn to the same type of narcissist, so you probably married the same guy twice. So she probably picked up the original behavior from her first, from her, from her, from your first husband, her father, if that's who it, if I'm, if I got it right. And it just continued the behavior when you brought a new husband and when he brought a new guy in and he treated you the exact same way. She's mimicking exactly what I saw him, what I heard and saw him do to you on those, on your last videos. It's the same tactic. She's him. She's him. I also couldn't help reflect how similar the traits of my daughter matched with his traits, character, and behaviors, which were just another revelation and realization that my daughter could have been narcissistic her whole life and continuing. This is where I turn to you for your opinion. While she was growing up, I always said in the back of my mind that over time she will get better. She will be kinder to me, and she'll be more understanding and certainly not so judgmental. She has reminded me several times over the years that one of my weaknesses as a mother was being too overprotective and saying she couldn't date until she turned 16 years old. However, she didn't seem to have any interest in dating until her first year of college. She always kept busy and productive. I thought I did a really good job at being a mom and raising her while wearing many hats, but I recognize that I wasn't perfect and will never, and will never be.
in the coming years, I began to feel bad that I didn't make more money. I just feel that some of her resentments were about that. I don't know why. I did the best I could with that. Because you know she's a spoiled brat. She's a spoiled brat. Spoiled brats compare, care about what you buy them and money. I'm not trying to utilize this letter and talk smack about my only child. Rather, I'm seriously broken up over her recent estrangement. We haven't spoken for nearly two months, and I'm shattered inside. The entire time I've been married, she's always stuck up for my narc husband and never supported my feelings. She's never really been transparent either. There seems to have almost been a smokescreen all our life. I can't explain it, but whatever it has been, I've ignored it and have never called her out on it. She's always been extremely ambitious. She participated in all the talent shows, was a cheerleader in high school for four years. Me, as the proud football mom, always supporting her. She always maintained good grades, mostly A's and B's, through, her, through school. I've always been her shoulder to cry on when she was living on campus 3,000 miles away in the cold, brutal, brutal winters, being homesick, talking about guys, and whatever other obstacles she was facing or fearful of. I always comfort her over the phone. <clears throat> I divorced her biological dad when she was one and a half, one the one and, when she was one and a half years old, due to his heavy drug use and physical abuse on me. I remained a single mom until I was married about five years later, then ended up single once again on her thirteenth birthday, until the day she left for college at eighteen years of age. That's when I met my narc husband. I'll admit that I wasn't the best role model, however. I never had guys in the house, never moved in with any guys until I got married again and never hit, beat, or slap my daughter. I raised her to say thank you, be grateful, kind, loving, and appreciative. I taught her to always respect her elders. She had the same friends all through the years, up to her graduation. She remains friends with a handful of them, even after 31 years. During the last conversation we had, she told me that I was the worst mother ever, and that I needed to get help. She also told me that she had always been mean to my narc husband, that I had always been mean to my narc husband, especially since she had lived with us for a few years after returning home from college. <clears throat> Where she claimed she witnessed me being mean to him. Again, this is projection. She's the one being mean, so she throws it on you. I mean, that's just her tactic, because she knows what she does. She said she will not seek, speak to me till I seek therapy. She's in medical school and lives in another country. She did reside with me and my narc husband after being away at college for four years and attending community college, taking classes to prepare her for medical school. She then left a few years later to live in another country where she obtained her master's degree, then headed off to the country where she now resides, her second year of med school. About two months prior to our last conversation, she came for a short visit with her boyfriend, who I met for the first time. They've been together almost three years. During that visit, I sensed that familiar indifference at various times we were together. On the last evening of their visit, I was driving them back to their hotel. Her boyfriend was in the front with me, and she was sitting, seated in the middle of the back seat. We began discussing their return flight the next morning. She interrupted with a question of, are you still seeing that psychiatrist for your ADHD? And are you still taking that medication? That me are you still taking that mediation? Yeah, in the, are you still taking that mediation? In a know-it-all tone of voice. I was so embarrassed that she asked this in front of her boyfriend, who I met just two days before, and as I looked at her in her in the rear view mirror of my car at a red light and I said yes I am. After that she didn't say anything. I looked over at her boyfriend who was just staring who was just staring straight ahead, unable to tell if if he felt awkward, but I'm sure he felt a little embarrassed that she did that. And I'm sure he's fucking terrified of the bitch. I'm sure he's terrified of the little snot because she does this with everybody. And let me tell you why she wants to be a doctor. She wants to be a doctor so she can fucking go around diagnosing people. Specifically, you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I would tell her that. It's like, the only reason you want to be a doctor is so you could be a little fucking know-it-all. It's for your own purposes. Not to actually help anybody. 
You know this about her. You've always known this about her. You just never wanted to admit it. Now, she probably picked up these characteristics, okay, A, genetically from her father, B, from your second husband, and C, from the third husband, because you're in a pattern of abuse, that you've been in this cycle of abuse for decades, and now she just picked up on it, like that you're somebody that could be abused from an early age, and she picked up on the abuser's tactics. That's why she's asking you medical questions, looking down her nose at you. Really? Why is she going to medical school out of the country, by the way? Why? Why? Why would an American go out of the country to go to medical school unless they couldn't get into any American medical schools? <clears throat> right? Let's be honest here. Let's be honest here. This is just one example of how she has exposed me in various ways all her life, and I've never confronted her on it, nor have I told anyone about this her entire life. It's painful, however. I feel that once my divorce is over and I'm finally on my own, my hope is that we will talk again. I can't believe my narc husband actually turned my only daughter into a flying monkey, but I think she's been a flying monkey all her life. There's been so much more to say about my daughter, and I feel like it's been a roller coaster ride with her emotionally her entire life. Thanks, Ollie. Appreciate your input from the bottom of my heart. I will always look forward to watching your videos. Keep doing the exceptional job you do every day. I'm really sorry. I, I'm really. <clears throat> no, that doesn't even apply. Forever one of your biggest fans. You need to listen. You've done most of the legwork now on the divorce for as far as the paperwork goes. You need to get a lawyer. You cannot go in there alone because what's going to happen, what's going to happen is your daughter is going to show up to testify against you. I guarantee it. I promise you she will show up to fuck you over because that's the mean girl she is. Those are the tactics she's learned. She's already set it up. She's already setting up the course. Why do you think she's asking you about if you're seeing if you're if you're on your medication and you're going to the doctor? What do you think it is like what do you think it's if you either go to therapy or I'm not talking what do you think that's about? She's living out of the country, in medical school, lived 3,000 miles away. You're not in her life. You're about as low contact as you could be. So why? Why now? Huh? No. She's trying to get her narcissistic supply out of you. Just like Meet Normus did, showing up in court to testify against me. That's what your daughter's going to do. I promise you, that's what's happening. You cannot go in there alone trying to represent yourself because this motherfucker is going to bring an army with him. He's going to bring whoever he can. And I'm sure he's going to bring an attorney. I would think your legal costs would be pretty limited since you've done all the filing. But damn it, you're going to need somebody in that courtroom speaking for you because you're not prepared to do it yourself. You're not emotional. None of us are. No, I wouldn't send. I wouldn't go in myself. I wouldn't send anybody in themselves to deal with this. Nobody's emotionally equipped to do this on their own. You need some kind of representation. You need to find some lawyer to take this for you, pro bono. You need to figure this out somehow. You cannot walk in there alone, and you have to be prepared for your daughter to show up and try to fuck you over. That's what this is about. Your daughter has enjoyed being mean to you your entire life. 
why would you stop now? I want you another one of your hardest moments. She's not. So, thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you for your story. I really appreciate it. I hope this helps and you take my advice to heart and I hope you're able to find some kind of legal representation. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a narcissist you'd like to expose or a topic you'd like me to cover, you know what to do with my PayPal in the email links in the description box. And remember, when you do send me your story, please put on top of the email, whether it's with or without contribution, and what name you'd like to go by on top of the email. This is Ollie Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon. Bye.